Hi, today I'm going to be turning a slimline pen out of some blue and white acrylic. Uh, I'll put a link down below in the description where you can buy the pen kit for this. It's from Craft Supplies and it only costs $175, so I generally get this one because it doesn't cost very much. Uh, the pen, I already drilled and cut my pen blanks and did all that. I have a good video on that that I put up. I will also put a link in the description to that if you're wondering how to do all that. But for right now, I'm just going to slim over all of that and only show you just the turning of the pen in my process. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, this is what I'm going to use for the turning of my pen. I have my mandrel, the number two Morse taper, which goes into my headstock there. I have this little tiny container with all of my most used things for pens, all the bushings that I use the most, the burring tool, exacto knife, and a few spacers. So this is the Slim Style pen, so I'm going to grab my Slim Style bushings, just slide right over like that. And I could take the acrylic pen blanks out of here. Okay, one goes on. Uh, I'm not too concerned about patterns lining up right now uh, because for some reason when I turn acrylic I always seem to lose the pattern anyways pretty quickly. So that lines up a little bit, but I'm not perfectly concerned with having the pattern line up exactly. So I'll move this out of my way. My tail stock, I'm gonna pull up. Now you could, if you're gonna turn a pen for the first time, you don't know what to do, you only have the mandrel and your pen blank and your bushings or whatever. Most people will just have a little brass uh, nut to slide over their mandrel. That will crank pressure to hold these still. But the problem with that is if it's very easy to over tighten and that will flex the mandrel rod and that makes a pretty rough pen. If you've done it, you know exactly what, what I'm talking about because I have screwed up on that a lot. Um, but if you don't tighten it enough, these will spin free and it'll be really hard to turn. So this is called a mandrel saver. This center, it's about the size of a three millimeter bushing and it just slides right over your mandrel. And you lock that down and you apply pressure and the pressure is not applied to the mandrel rod, it's applied directly to the bushings. So you can't really flex your mandrel rod. So once you tighten it down, you're good to go. So then I could pull up my tool rest, get it as close as I can without hitting anything. It's probably about good. And my speed, I'm gonna turn up to about 1500 RPMs to start roughing this in. I entirely forgot to mention this, but I'm gonna to try to use a skew to get this roughed in and hopefully through this entire thing because you can get a much cleaner cut with a skew. So I'm gonna play with these two. This I just call a small one, this I call my big skew. So each one I'll just see what kind of a cut I get. I'm getting a pretty nice cut with that skew. I'm just gonna continue to bring the ends down to the diameter of the bushings. The bushings will tell you how far down you need to bring your pen blank so it'll line up perfectly with the hardware on the pen.
only have a little bit more to go before I'm there with this one. So now the only thing I'm going to want to watch out for is just taking really light cuts. Uh, I'm going to try to take a, an extremely light cut because if I turn in too much with my skew, I'll really start to lose control and I'll gouge into it and I'll go past the diameter of my bushing. So at this point it's all about control of the tool. Okay, now I could start sanding, so let me get the tool rest out of the way. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and straighten up my lathe a little bit so I have a bit of a cleaner area to work with. Okay, so I've kind of set up a makeshift dust collection thing with my shop back and one of the attachments. I think this is actually going to work out pretty well because it has such a wide range here. I'm ready to start sanding this down and I have such a good surface here left off from my skew chisel that I'm just going to start at 240 then I'm going to go to 320, 400, 600, and 800. I'm actually, I usually turn up my speed pretty high when I turn a pen and I just leave it at the same speed constant through the entire process. But I've heard online at, at this point when you start to sand, uh, in your lower grits you should turn it down pretty slow and then you should crank it up full speed uh, when you start getting into your really high high grits like the micro mesh and the polishes so that's what I'm going to try today and I'm going to see how this works out so I'm going to turn it down to about 600 and see how that goes pretty smooth right now so the next step is to begin polishing this to work up a nice shine now if this was a wooden pen you want to apply your finish and I'd usually put on CA finish and then sand it down again and polish that but since this is acrylic basically resin or plastic it does not really need to be finished because it will never wear out or lose that shine so I'm going to start with micro mesh. This is micro mesh. I just keep it in this little plastic container and it has all the grits here. It is 1500, 1800, 2400, 3200, 3600, 4000, 6000, 8000, and 12000. And that's your last grit. So you go through all these. I generally wet sand with this to sort of keep it fresh so it doesn't clog up right away. And just so the water doesn't splash on the bed of my lathe and get all rusty, I'm just going to fold up a paper towel here. And I think I'm just going to, I saw this in a video, I think I'm just going to hold it underneath like this to try to catch it from splashing. And in between each grit, I'll just dry it off a little bit. And this one, I'm going to turn up my speed maybe to 1200 on.
Now, as you can see, that puts a very shiny gloss on a pen. Now, if you wanted to stop here and take it off your mandrel and assemble the pen, that'd be perfectly understandable because it's super smooth, it's very shiny, it looks good, and you can just assemble it right now, but I'm gonna use a Pro Speed buffing compound. I just used this the other day on a pen, so I'm still kind of trying it out. I really liked the result it gave me last time. This is Meguiar's Mirror Glaze Professional Pro Speed Compound. Um, it has this little chart here. I don't know what that means. Uh, fast coating Body Shop Safe Compound with advanced technology designed for professionals. So. It, it says quick removal of 1200 grit and finer sanding marks for easier polishing and it removes deep scratches, acid rain, whatever that is, or severe swirls and holograms. Works great on fresh and cured paints. Pretty sure whoever made this didn't intend to use it on an acrylic pen, but uh, I'm going to try it out again today. I have a damp uh, cloth here, just an old cut up t-shirt and I just soaked it in a little bit of water and wrung it out so it's kind of dry but not really. So you don't need a lot of this stuff. I'm just gonna put on a very, very small drop. Just like that. And first I'm just going to apply it to the blank just like this just to make sure it gets on all the surfaces. I'm going to turn my speed pretty slow and gradually gain speed as it gets finer. Oh my god, you really cannot beat the type of finish and smoothness and gloss when you use that type of a buffing compound. That stuff really puts on a nice shine. It really kind of gets into any sand scratches you might have filled and really starts to polish those up so you can't really notice them. And it just feels so slick to the touch. Got release pressure, pull this off. I got the hardware of the pen, put the bushings back in my bushings bin, and the pen press is awfully handy for assembling pens, but if you don't have one, another really easy option is to use the live center or your center on your tailstock and just crank on pressure to press the pen parts together. Uh, another option would be a quick action clamp, the ones with the handle that you just uh, squeeze back and forth to try to push. I would not recommend that though. Or you can use a vise and I would also not recommend that. I think the second best option is to use the tailstock in your lathe. I'm actually just going to lay out all my little parts in a little tray here just so I don't lose them. You have your ink refill. You have your writing tip. That was the center band. Your pen clip. The top of your pen and the twist mechanism. First step is to take your writing tip and press it into uh, the end of your pen. This one out, because I want this one to be the top of the pen. And I'm gonna put down two of these. I don't really know why my pen press is like this. That's how I set my distance. This one could also unscrew and thread in and out. But I usually just set it the same thing every time. Set two down, pull this back. Put this together. Once it's lined up, 
just drive it home. And I usually sort of press pretty hard just to make sure it's in there nice and tight. It's that. Next step is to take your twist mechanism and press it in. And the twist mechanism has, if you can see that, there's a chrome part, this little tiny brass part here, and you just want to press it into the brass part where it ends. So I put down four, pull this back, line it up in there, and drive it home. It's going to go nice and slow. I try not to break momentum while doing this and press it in as far as it's going to go on the first shot because generally when I stop pushing and try to push again, it'll drive it in too far really quickly. So and you twist in your ink refill and it comes out the right amount and it goes all the way back in. So that's good. We're going to set this part aside. Now we're going to put the top and the pen clip in. So I'm just going to take out the top, have the pen clip out. I want the top of the pen to be this end. So I have this tiny little scratch there that I don't really want to show, so I'm going to try to hide it behind the pen clip. Now, uh, this is only a 175 pen kit. It only costs $1.75, so I don't really expect much. So it doesn't really surprise me that this, I gave the same exact pen kit to my father for, um, I think it was his birthday, or no, what was that? Uh, it was his birthday. I don't know what I'm thinking about, sorry. Um, I gave this same pen to my dad for his birthday, and over time I'm looking at it, and the top of the pen will come loose very frequently, and you kind of have to drive it back in every now and then. So after I saw that, what I'll do is to avoid this from spinning loose and to avoid the whole top of it from coming loose. I will just dab a very small drop of CA glue on there and press it in with the CA. So like I say, just the smallest possible amount. Just, you don't want this to get too messy. At this point you kinda gotta work quick otherwise it'll stick. Just gonna set it to that. Set down two. And drive it in. <sighs> really quickly. Otherwise, you won't be able to get it in there. Just gonna give that an extra hard push. Just to really make sure it's in there. Because I don't want that coming loose. There's usually a small amount of dried CA around the tip. It's still a little wet, so I can just kind of get that off of there really easily. Okay, the next step, you take the center band and you just slip it over the twist mechanism. And this one just slips over that. Just like that. And that's the completed pen. Pretty happy with this pen. I think it came out very well in my opinion. It's nice and shiny. Um, this pen will be for sale on my eBay. I'll put a link down below, but that depends when you check on this. The listing may have ended or it might have sold by the time you watch this video and click that link. But there will still be a link down there to my eBay store. Please go check that out. Every single dollar I make there goes towards a new bandsaw. And a note on that bandsaw, it costs $875. It is the Grizzly G0513. And I currently have $682. So I am getting so close. So if you want to buy something, that money will go towards that new bandsaw. And you can make me get it just all the sooner. So please go there and check that out. I will really appreciate it. It would help me out a lot. Um, I'll see you guys next Friday. Subscribe if you're interested. And uh, thanks for watching.